Hello, Kim Lee. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? It's so good to see your face. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for being here. This is Artist Chat, Black Voices Artist Chat, and we have the beautiful Kim Lee Smith here who is performing her show this Wednesday. I know. Yes, November 10th at 8 p.m. And her name, the name of her show is called Totally. Is it totally? L-O-Y. Totally. Like C-O-T-A-L-L-Y. Oh. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So tell us what Totally is about. What's so funny, the last time I did this show, and this is why I'm so excited for this, was the 8th and 9th of November, 2019. And then this is now cut to November 10th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 2021, to bring it back to life. Uh, this show is autobiographical. It is my story from uh, 17 till now going through, I, I like to call it from trauma to triumph. Mm -hmm. So it really is a triumphant journey of um, me as a young girl um, experiencing a traumatic experience and watching me kind of work myself out of that. And because I am a comedic uh, actress in person, uh, there's a lot of comedy in it. It's not necessarily a comedy. We like to call it a dramedy, but it leaves, hopefully people leave there inspired to continue their growth no matter what's come their way right and so that's kind of the gist of the story um if you have specific questions I will gladly dive in but if you're looking at the the overarching arc of the show it is literally me as a young 17 year old cheerleader going through trauma and then coming into this beautiful superwoman that I am today and I don't say that lightly because there was a time when I didn't think I was beautiful or super or anything or worth anything so for me to be able to say that live with you it, it, it's a true testament to what I've been through and who I am today oh I love that and you know and we don't need details because folks need to come out and see the details yeah hello. what you shared is enough because that sounds so inspiring and it's you know so many of us have been through whatever it is you know like trauma in whatever way or just any kind of difficulty challenge and to be able to come through it is is a beautiful thing and it's and we also we like to share for people. We like to root people on who yeah. have, you know, gone through something and we want to be able to go through whatever it is that we're going through as well. So I think that's yeah. really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I mean, it's been such an incredible journey. I remember when I first started writing this and I had kind of written the first version out of a dream, right? I was helping another friend write a one person show and we had already rented the space, but I didn't have a show. And I remember like everything that I was writing was kind of garbage. You know how you, if you've ever written, if you're out there and you've written, you understand what I'm talking about. And you got a pile of paper in the trash can and mm -hmm. the magic happens, right? The, the consistency of working that muscle of writing is the thing that creates the magic. Yes. And so I remember I had worked on his show and I'm just writing crap for my life and I went to sleep two weeks before the show and the show came to me in a dream mm -hmm. from movements to choreography to everything and I called my friend that I was helping I was like get your video camera right now I'm coming to the theater you're going to videotape what I dreamt last night and that was the the, the first version of my show mm -hmm. and unbelievable and I say this to people that I work with because I'm like if you don't show up for the universe the universe can't show up for you yeah. and I remember being hit with a lead pipe going is that really what you want that show like I was so like resistant to doing it and he's like okay I'm gonna make this easy for you God was like here you go this you show go do it and I was like okay and uh reluctantly stomped out onto the the, the stage for the first time and went okay, this is what it feels like to have a voice. This is what it feels like to openly, honestly tell your story vulnerably with love, right? This is what it feels like. And it has, I think this is the fourth rendition of it that I'm performing now. So it's been through uh, three full on versions and this is the fourth version of that. Wow. I mean, that's great that you had that vision and the, you and you also had the insight to like put it on tape right away. Because, you know, so many times we'll have a dream and we'll be like, what was that? <laughs> what did I dream? I didn't wrote it down. Damn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's great. And so what would you say to 
um, performers who don't have, you know, the dream, the vision, right? Mm -hmm. And they just know that they want to do a solo show. Like, what would you suggest in terms of starting the process? With every single person I've ever worked with, I say, write the thing that scares you the most. And I think that is it, right? I was trying to write around the thing that was right here that kept telling me to, to write it, to write it. So I would write down every single thing, and I'm giving you one of my lessons, mm -hmm. every single thing that you would never want to tell another person, that you'd be scared to tell another person, that you would yes. hate for anybody to know about you. And I would just write that list down, and then I would read them out loud to yourself. And the one that yells the loudest is the one you're supposed to write. You know, there's so many solo shows that are writing other people's versions or writing all these other things and wow. writing around it. But if you don't write, you know, when you watch TV, you watch movies, these are coming from people's core. It's not like random movies just pop out. They're coming from somebody's inner being, right? Their story that they brought to life in this cinema, cinematic way, right? Yeah. And so with solo shows, it's you. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no other actors. Like I'm always saying when I fuck up on stage. Oh, can I say that? You when just, I mess up on stage. You just did. <laughs> when I mess up on stage, I can't be like, that girl's a horrible actor. She don't even know what she's doing. I ain't got nobody to blame but myself. So it mm -hmm. is yours. And so I give this gift to you. Don't be afraid to be brave. This story that I wrote was the scariest thing. In fact, at the time I wrote it, nobody but a few people knew what had happened to me. Mm -hmm. And it was petrifying to begin the journey of putting that on stage. And then once it was on stage, I was like, oh man, I wish I would have done this 10 years ago. What was I waiting for? Yeah. Because it gave me such freedom, mm -hmm. such, such joy. And look, the, the dream comes, it doesn't have to be in the form of the dream that I had. It, when you put pen to paper, and I suggest not writing it on a computer, take your hand, I agree. Wait, well done. put your pen in your hand, and write it on paper because the catharsis that happens with pen to paper is a connection from your heart, your mind, and the paper. You're, you're, right? That's the only way to do it. And we've gotten very used to the computer, but the computer is a this. It, it, it keeps you from being vulnerable, right? And you can only be vulnerable if you're pulling it out of your soul. So my gift would be, don't be afraid. Yeah. Be brave. Even if you think it's going to be scary, like I did, and I'm sure you did, Julia, on your first one. Once you do it, <laughs> you're going to laugh at yourself for being afraid because it is so awesome and so empowering and so <sighs> yeah, life changing. Of course. I, I mean, I'm thinking about my very first show, which I'm going to perform this Saturday. And so that, so when I, if you look at the the tons of like yellow you know the yellow uh legal pad or whatever that's what yes. i write the show and actually at the time i didn't really i had somebody type it for me because i wasn't really a good i wasn't good at typing at the time oh okay okay um and so and so but uh, i agree with you about that process there's nothing like it as a matter of fact i i was writing i tell the story all the time that i was writing a section my brother speaks in a part of the show. And um, and so I was writing something that was coming from him. And it was just literally, I literally just like channeled him and it was just coming out and I'm crying. I'm seeing the tears, you know, on the paper and I'm, but I'm writing anyway and I'm writing, writing, writing. And then when I looked at it, it was my brother's handwriting. That's what we call the dream. That's the magic, baby. Yeah. That's powerful. And, so, and but you know, but what you said, right? I know. I know. Ooh. I have chills now thinking that and I got it. I think it's in New York, that that pad. I still I saved it. It's in New York. Um at my place in New York. But um Oh, at my place in New York. At my place in New York. I'm by coastal. I'm by yes. coastal. And I might have something else at my place in Paris. Yes. I don't know. I have to check. <laughs> um <laughs> but um but yeah, I, you know, what you said, it made me think of the whole thing of like the difference between fear and courage, right? So it's like courage is you have the fear, but you do it anyway. That's right. Yeah. Act in spite of, they say, yeah. act in spite of fear. Because there's nothing great that comes out of um, 
comfortability, right? We cannot grow if we are comfortable. We can only grow if we're uncomfortable. And I got to tell you in this version that I'm performing on Wednesday, I had to write a new ch a chunk, a new chunk. And I remember it took me about six months of like scream, like pure agony. And I don't mean that, you know, I wasn't living life, but every time I got back to those pages, it was like, I had been so vulnerable for so long in this show, but then there was a little piece of vulnerability that I wasn't willing to share. And I finally shared it in this version. And I was like mad as H-E double hockey sticks. I was like, I can't believe I have to write this. This is awful. It makes me look stupid. I get like, I was so angry at it. And it is one of the most beautiful parts of the show that I've created. And believe me, I didn't want to. There was not one part of me that was like, I cannot wait to write this section. It's going to be so awesome. Everybody's going to love it. It's so yucky, but it's yucky and it's truth and it's who I am. And to be able to look myself in the mirror and say those words out loud on stage just reminds me of how strong I really am because yeah. it ain't, you know, when, when you're not afraid to show your good, your bad, and your ugly, then you got a story to tell, right? But I think most of us just want people to see our good and it's not enough because then people go, oh, she hasn't been through anything, so whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna discount her growth. But the truth of the matter is, is there's not one person on this earth that has not been through something that has rocked them into the person they are today. Yeah. And that's great storytelling. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love You know, that. great storytelling is seeing ourselves in something, even if we don't have that exact experience, but knowing that this is a human experience, mm -hmm. right? This transformation is human. Yes, yes. And so you've been performing your show for how long now? <laughs> um, God, a decade. A decade? Yeah. Okay. And you and you've In toured it, right? Like, tell us a little bit about where you've performed and you know the history oh, of your performances. Well, it's so funny because that first version we did at I don't know if you remember that theater called the Fake Gallery Theater. It was on Melrose Rose. Yes, uh -huh. remember the makeout. I so know. my friend and I, like I said, he was a guy and we did a show called The Black and the Jew because he was Jewish and I was black. And we were like, that's going to be our showcase. And <laughs> we did our two shows in tandem. And I remember after doing that, everybody's like, oh my God, you got to keep doing this. This is amazing. Blah, 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 blah. And I slept for like three months. Like after I wrote that, it was such a cathartic experience. I was like, G -g -g. Yeah. I just... Ugh, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do anything else. And so I remember Ruthie Otero. Remember Ruthie Otero? I don't know if you yeah. know Ruthie. Yeah. Ruthie's an amazing- I know Latino her from LAWTF. Yes. Women's Day amazing, yeah. amazing playwright and um, solo artist as well. And uh, she was like, oh, there's a one festival in New York that you should submit to. Yeah. You probably did it. Did I've you done do it. it? Yeah. Okay, so that is how it all started. Now, this was interesting because I, I did that version and then I went to New York and did that same version in January. So that was in September and then I went there in January. And then when I came back, I had won an opportunity to come back to New York and do it again at mm -hmm. kind of a showcase for the, you know, the people that did well at that festival. And so I brought on Paula Killen. I don't know if you know Paula Killen to That's direct and work with me on the next version. And, uh, the first thing she says to me is, you gotta change the beginning. It's gotta come in a different place because blah, 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 blah. And I start bawling my eyes out. Cause now I'm, I'm this is mine, I've created this. Yeah. And she wasn't wrong. And so we began the journey of the, the rewrite. Most of the bait, it's still the core of it. Like it was still, every part that I put in is there but it was now in a new order. Mm -hmm. And so then I went back to New York and I did New York Fringe. I did Orlando Fringe. I did Hollywood Fringe and won Best Theater and Best Solo Show of the Festival. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And then I ended up in Hawaii performing. I just went to Lithuania and performed of all places because wow. a woman saw me at the New York Fringe Festival and brought me to Lithuania. And then I've done multiple different theaters here in Los Angeles, but it has had a journey, baby. It's been Hawaii to uh, Colorado to like anywhere that I could do it. Now, I never did it 
quote unquote run, mm -hmm. but I had the opportunity to really, really, really uh, play it to a lot of different houses. And I think Lithuania, of course, was my best experience because it was subtitled behind me uh, mm -hmm. in Lithuanian. Yeah. And I didn't even know where Lithuania was. So it was like one of those experiences to see them laugh and get it in another language was yeah. badass. It was pretty, pretty spectacular. Nice. Yeah, it was really, really neat. And the festival circuit was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I only did a short festival circuit because I was like very poignant at the places that I wanted to go because I wanted to get good reviews from these poignant places. Yeah. And I didn't want to go someplace that were like, oh, we don't care about that review. So I was very um, strategic in what I did. Mm. And then did you, have you done colleges or high school? I have done colleges. Exactly. Like I did uh, University of Colorado. I uh, did Notre Dame. Like I've done quite a bit of colleges and I've really enjoyed that. But most of the work I've done has just been word of mouth. Like I haven't really like put it all out there. Like I went to Winchester like three years back to back. We shot like, it, it, it's been word of mouth. So yes, I enjoy the college circuit. I love talking to students. Like it's been such a joy. Um, I remember my first college experience, I had done a event in Las Vegas and a woman saw me there and she uh, was like, would you come to Winchester to Shenandoah University? I was like, sure. And she called me, she was like, your show's only 20 minutes. So I don't know how we're going to fill the blank. I was like, my show's an hour. She was like, what? Oh my God. I, it was so good. And I was so captivated. I didn't realize it. So that was my first ex, uh, experience um, at a college. And which was so awesome. The football players were the MCs. And if you know my show, uh, my traumatic experience happened by football players. And so um, it's it was so neat. And I'm still friends with those boys right now. And they were my MCs and the students and I. So I had gone back there three times because I became kind of a family member there. And they really created some great programs on their campuses coming out of watching my show. And that was life changing. Nice. Really life changing. Good. Well, I'm excited to see your show. I've heard about it for all these years and I've never seen it. So and I feel the same about you. Yes. Yes. So I'll go to your show. You come to mine. I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm grateful that you, um, that you put this together. Like we forget how important it is. And as the curator of Black Voices, it's really so powerful to see what you've been capable of doing and how, you know, we can be, especially as solo artists, we can be so isolated mm -hmm. and you've really built a community that has allowed us to not be isolated. And I thank you really from the depths of my heart for that, because it takes that courage again, um, acting in spite of fear, being brave, you know, brave is the, the word of the day, which is um, bravery doesn't mean you're perfect. Doesn't mean you're, you know, not, you're not capable, like you won't make mistakes. It just means that even though you fall, you'll pick yourself back up again and bravely walk forward into the next opportunity, mm -hmm. right? We're always going to fall. That's part of growth. So thank you for um, being brave enough to pull this together because I'm honored to be a part of it and honored to be a voice that is a Black female on this earth today in the yeah. world that we live in. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please come out to the theater on Wednesday, and that is November 10th at 8 p.m. to see T O T A L L Y. Totally. Okay. And totally means a full circle, right? When we think of ourselves, we're an evolving circle of growth. And that's where totally comes from. We're totally ourselves, totally full, totally vulnerable, totally brave, totally everything. That's what the show is all about. All right. Well, I am totally happy and totally <laughs> excited to see your show on Wednesday. Awesome. Thank you, Juliet. Have a great one. And thank you, everybody, for listening in. All right. See you soon. All right. Take care. <laughs>